be elected by my colleagues as Speaker of the Massachusetts House of Representatives is the greatest honor I will receive in my lifetime. I was born in the city of Everett and have never lived anywhere else, nor have I wanted to. The citizens of my city have elected me to begin serving my 19th year in this legislature. To all of them who have meant so much to me all of my life, and most especially during the past year, I give my sincerest thanks and appreciation. I extend my hand of friendship to each of you, regardless of party or position. I ask you to work with me as we begin to address the many important legislative issues facing the Commonwealth. Each of us has a contribution to make for those of us who have led and for those who will. The goals should be the same to legislate responsibly. We owe our constituents and all of our citizens no less than our best efforts and our purest motives. I pledge to you that as your speaker, I will treat each of you with respect. From this day forward, I will devote all of my energy, my talents, my ability to you and to this institution. I will make mistakes, and you will tell me about them, and I will try to do better. I will do the very best that I can. Please help me to succeed, and I thank you. George brought a new style of leadership to the House of Representatives, showing respect for all members, irrespective of party affiliation. He encouraged open debate. George was re-elected speaker in January 1987, at which time he had the opportunity to review his record on promises made and promises kept. When you first elected me speaker on January 2nd, 1985, I told you that I was determined to open up the legislative process, to rewrite the rules in order to provide for more opportunities for participation in the process by the members and to provide more importance and more responsibility to our committee system. If I could help create such an open legislative atmosphere and convince you that it was real, that there were truly no limits to what quality legislation could be produced by our collective efforts that good things would happen, and look what we did. We have grown to know each other much better. You know that I care about you, and that I have a deep love and respect for this institution. You know that I, like you, am proud to be known as a legislator. By now, you know that my two decades of service in the Massachusetts House have been dedicated to the improvement of this institution. And you now understand, I hope, why I fight so stubbornly and so hard in order to defend it from unfair attack from any source within or without this building. George exerted the leadership that the House needed to resolve the fiscal crisis facing our Commonwealth in 1988 you will see a strong, intelligent, and decent man leading an institution of this Commonwealth to vote for a package of spending cuts and tax increases to bring us back from the brink of a fiscal crisis. The circumstances in 1988 were not too different than the fiscal crisis that the Commonwealth faces today. There have been taxes raised throughout this nation in this year. I am told 36 states have raised taxes. I may be wrong, it may be a different number. There is something going on nationally, it's called a recession or the beginnings of one. And we are not exempt from the national economic trends that are going on. Try to cut another 400 million 
without destroying the very fabric of government in this state. You've tried it. Now, if there is a suggestion, you've made it. If it's been rejected, it's been rejected by a democratic process in this House. You voted it down. Fine. That's the will of the majority, isn't it? You have a right to recommend cuts. You don't have a right to win. And that judgment was made by the members here. And that judgment was, that's enough. We don't want to hurt people anymore. If we have to pay for it, we will. We've made cut after cut after cut. Now I'm sick and tired of hearing people talk about who's to blame. Doesn't matter who's to blame. We'll accept whatever blame we deserve. And if you're going to talk about all the years you've said cut and take credit for that, fine. But you've always said cut and you've always wanted to take credit for it. And if there are any programs that are going to help people, it doesn't come from you, it comes from us. It's always come from us, on a national level or a state level. And it will continue to emanate from the Democratic Party because we have compassion and we care about people. This debate reveals Georgia's core values and shows his determination to bring balance to the fiscal affairs of the Commonwealth without sacrificing the vul vulnerable in our society. George accomplished this by encouraging intense debate and reasoning as opposed to autocratic rule. George made a strong contribution to an improved form of governance in our state. In addition to this contribution, George Kaverian held a legendary relationship with the people he loved in Everett, as well as with all citizens in the Commonwealth. He truly cared about each and every person that he met. He would extend a helping hand if it was in his power to do so in an official capacity. If his official powers were limited, he would help many by using his limited resources. George never married. He cared for our mother to the day she passed. While my family and the Latanzi family was his immediate family, there were so many in his life that he counted as his extended family. Most of George's friends and family knew him as a man who could tell a funny story or bust someone who was high and mighty.